Now, let's get to this guy right here, Tobias Harris. So there has also been news regarding Tobias Harris. So the Pistons and the Utah Jazz are the front runners to add Tobias Harris to their team. My opinion may not be popular, but I'm going to give it to y'all anyway. I don't mind it. I really don't. It, first of all, it's crazy. It's been eight years since we added in that crazy it's been eight years since we added him back in 2016 but let me just go through his stats real quick and then y'all can jump on me if you want so when he was here he averaged 16.8 points 5.3 rebounds 1.9 assists right 47 percent shooting in 32 minutes last year for the sixers he averaged 17.3 points six boards three assists a steal and nearly a block in 34 minutes on 49 percent shooting 35 from three better numbers than when he was here so i know you have your thoughts i'm gonna give you mine first and then you can give me yours as well i'm gonna tell you this bro when he was here i loved when he was here i loved when he was here um he has family ties here too his younger brother terry actually played for eastern michigan for those who are not aware his younger brother's name is terry harris look just like his twin brother j cole <laughs> <laughs> j cole yeah j cole's twin brother right um, so he does have some family ties here. I think that may be part of the reason why he may be interested in coming back here. I don't think it'd be more so for the money. I think it'd be more so about situation. And honestly, bro, I was sad to see him go in that Blake Griffin trade. To this day, that was still a mistake to me in my mind. So Tobias is not an all-star, right? Never has been. But he was very solid and steady. He can spread the floor. He can create offense for himself. He can score in a lot of different ways. He plays within the offense. He doesn't try to, he doesn't stagnate the offense, right? And I know this past season wasn't his best. I know this past postseason was not his best. I get it. I know in the last game of the season for the Sixers, he scored zero points. Yes, he did. That's not good at all. <laughs> I get it. I knew that's probably where you were going to. But look, I'm not going to judge him off of that, bro. I'm judging him off his career. He's only 31. Mm -hmm. He's been consistent throughout his career when he's been asked to play his role. He's not going to come here and try to be the guy offensively. He's going to be a complimentary tertiary scorer who can spread the floor, give a spacing out of that pick and roll. I don't mind him in the corner providing us more space. He's got a solid post game, good free throw shooter. He's a good player, man. Defensively, he's not great. He's not terrible. He's Whoa. solid. Look, bro, we got 60 million a cap. Every year you got to spend all of it before the start of the season. You can't carry it over like you used to be able to do. You have to use all your cap before day one of the regular season. So to me, this is one of the better moves they can make based on what they need. We talked about with Dalton Connect, how we need spacing or we need defense. He provides spacing and he can be a tertiary score. He's not the greatest defensive player. We talked about it, but he fills some needs. And also, lastly, one of the biggest things I like about Tobias is he is a consummate pro. Now, we always talk about having a veteran presence here, having somebody who's going to take the game seriously. That's Tobias Harris. He takes the game very seriously. And he will set a great example for these young guys. He's like a robot. He does the same thing every single day, the same way. He's got great habits. And I think he can help these young guys build good habits for themselves individually and as a team. Yeah, man, I won't mind it. As long as the contract isn't too crazy, I would not mind bringing him here for a couple years. I see you with a scratch in your head. What's, what's, what's going on? That contract better be a merchant deal, I swear. <laughs> to bring it back. And for my, my guy, V, everybody didn't like Tobias Harris when he was here. I was one of the people who didn't like him. You know why? Really? Fucked on defense. Help side defense is zero. It's a shot chucker. I can't stand him. He's gotten better, though, bro. That was a long He's time ago. He's not good anymore, Deuce. No, bro, not, I, dis I disagree. Okay. I disagree. He's not good anymore. We don't need him to be great. No. We need him to be, look, we need him to space the floor. He can still shoot the ball. He can I'd still rather, get to the I'd line. Rather, I'd rather start Fontecchio. Nah, but where? Okay, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because now the question is. come here, he ain't playing floor. That's what, okay, so look, I'm going to take you back down memory lane. You remember this. One of the disadvantages we had against Cleveland in the playoffs was our size at the four. Right, they, we have Marcus Morris playing the three, Tobias playing the four. Tobias being six eight, Kevin Love was punishing him. He was punishing him in the post every single like LeBron was was LeBron was just playing chess. Here, go to work, go to work, K Love. Right. So to me, he needs to play the three. I don't mind the four in small ball matchups, but 
the league, as we've talked about, King, is going back to that two big lineup. You look at um, Minnesota, Denver, yeah, pretty much uh, Milwaukee, Boston, yeah. all these guys. Like, all these teams have implemented that two big lineup. And more teams are starting to do it now. So, if we sign him, I'm starting him at the three. And then... He has to go to the He three. has to. He absolutely has to, bro. So, like, my starting five is this. This is what I would envision. Kate, Jaden, Tobias, this might surprise you, Stewart, and then Duran. Now, hear me out. I know a lot of people don't think Isaiah Stewart is a starter, right? But I think he would fit well with this lineup. Because now you got guys who can provide spacing. He doesn't have to do too much scoring. Because now you got Tobias carrying some of that load. Our guard play can help facilitate easy baskets for him. Especially with Tobias also providing that spacing, right? So, I know a lot of y'all don't think he's a starting four. But to me, he's the best option at the four, given what we have. Right with the two big lineup. And... I know you mentioned Fontecchio, but bro, he's only 6'7". He's 6'7", 206. Tobias is 6'8", 236. Small so if I don't want Tobias at my four, I yeah. definitely don't want Fontecchio there either. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I that's why I would say Stu. Anyway. That's why I would say Stu, though, is the best option in that lineup with Tobias. Because now you got a pretty balanced starting five. You got shooting. You got some defense. It's not the most, but you got some defense. You got a two big lineup. You got spacing. Stu is not asked to score points. He's just asked to do the dirty work. He is it's kind of constructed pretty balanced. Tobias is not out of position at the four. He's back at the three. He's not undersized. You see what I'm saying? You still got Duran. You still got Stu. You got Caden. You got Ivy as your guards. That's a pretty balanced starting to five. In that in that situation, that's why I think Stu can start in that situation. What if you can have okay? Who would you rather have, Miles Bridges mm -hmm. or Tobias? Miles Bridges, come on now. So if you got Miles Bridges, you put Pacquiao sure. at the three, with Jalen Duran at the five. You good with that? Stu yeah. Come on the bench. Yeah. We also Absolutely. A backup big. If get lucky, we get drama. Backup Absolutely big. right. Right. It's more balanced. Hundred percent. I'm right. with y'all. Like, I, yeah, Miles. I'm just talking about Tobias because that's what has been reported. If Miles is, is is an option, absolutely. It ain't no question. It's nothing to think about. It's nothing to think about. Still can be the backup four. Miles is your starting four with JD. Let's go. I may can even consider. Well, no, nah, I wouldn't put a start. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe even a start to three at that point, depending. But that's a different dynamic. But yeah, definitely. If you have a Miles Bridges here, yeah, come on, absolutely, all day long. But I'm not opposed. To Tobias, I do think he can help. He wouldn't help the same way a Miles Bridges would, but he was responsible for about six wins for the Sixers last season. So he's still a player that can come in and contribute. It just won't be the splash that I think most people are looking for. Yeah, because you know those are it's three names that I've heard. Obviously, Harris. I've heard. I've seen some things with Bridges. I've seen some things with Kyle Kuzma. Those type of veterans, right? You know, come yeah. in and contribute. Tobias ain't going to contribute on defense. He can knock down right. defense here and there. Like I said, it, it doesn't matter who we bring in here. What matters is the coach. The coach has to come in here and demand that respect and say, listen, you yeah. need to go out there and be a shot chucker. Right. Try to make in guys that's the fourth option on teams come here and try to be a number one option. Mm -hmm. like, we, we done with that. No more Bojan Bogdanovic right. situations, right? At the end of the day, which for me personally, I wish we would have had a coach before going into this draft so he can put his twang on it too. But the coach is going to say everything for me. What yeah. you going to demand out of these players? What type of role they play? What type of system you going to create for these guys to be successful in? So yeah. if they go and get a guy in Tobias Harris, I'm not going to argue with it. I'm not going to argue with anything they do. I'm going to give them they just do and say, hey, listen, maybe you bring the right guys in here get it right with these guys that you brought right that's we all hold them to that test all of us all of us business fans are so that's a good point it's a lot of questions that need to be answered yeah. because there's a lot of different combinations you can go with and we haven't even made any moves yet yeah it's really going to come down to how the coach sees fit as far as putting these guys together in the best position to be successful and who that entails we're not going to really know anything until we have our coach in place and then we can kind of have more of an idea of what his vision is for the team along with the, whoever the GM is going to be. Because <laughs> right. you don't right. have that either. <laughs> right, right. Um, and I, I'm with V. I'm with you, V. I think V said earlier that he doesn't want Fontecchio playing more minutes than Asar. I'm with you, bro. 100%. Because once again, we're not contending yet. 
we want to win more games for sure but we also want our guys to grow as they're winning games and the best way to grow is to be on the floor so even though he may not be the spacer that Pontecchio is our identity at its core is defense one more thing about Tobias contract talk I think you said it needs to be a very friendly contract if you were to even sign him right his last contract was five years 180 million that's 36 million a year I ain't paying you that bro <laughs> I ain't paying you that maybe 25 30 maybe and that's just because we have the cap space to do it and we have to spend it and beggars can't always be choosers if we can get somewhere in that 25 to 30 range something like I don't know like three years 85 90 i do that but like you said it has to be the right contract otherwise it's, it's i'm not about to overpay for tobias at 31. i'm just not gonna do it especially when he doesn't provide all of the things like you spend that kind of money on a guy that's providing everything that you need you know what i'm saying not a guy that's giving you one or two things i don't want to see eight or ten eyes on kate next season every time down the court yeah where they're not even paying attention to the guy i, I don't i don't want to see that that was disgusting that was disgusting to watch. It made them so predictable and so easy to defend. They didn't respect any of those guys. Even with a guy like Isaiah Stewart, who got better from three point, they didn't respect him either because he just started shooting him. So we need guys that are respected on the basketball court as far as I'm not about to help off just because this is their best player. That's what I'm looking to see next season. I need to see defenses kept honest. These guys got to be able to play. One thing Tom Gore said that I will give him credit for is he said, we need guys signing the contracts who are playing on the court. He said, we had way too much money tied up on that bench. Tom Gore, there might be hope for you yet. Yeah. Because that was because he was 100% correct. We had a bunch of guys on the bench who were just guys. Yeah. There's dead money sitting on the bench. We don't need that. We need guys who are actually going to contribute now. And that, and that includes injury. I don't want guys who are really, really good, but really, really hurt. It's wasted money.